Okay, this was a, a huge group, uh, the largest group of the, um, of, of the winter school. Um, we were investigating uh, the personalization algorithm of Amazon because we want to check how much our personalized uh, shopping experience, uh, how much our shopping experience can be individualized. Um, we came from a backstory of uh, uh, making, making uh, other research in social media. We were expecting something similar, but uh, we didn't get exactly uh, the same level of uh, individualization. Also, the tool was in development uh, as we speak, so it uh, was uh, changing uh, real time and uh, getting an uh, update on how to release something better in the future. Our research questions uh, were mostly uh, on uh, um, how we can understand uh, what is offered to us. If the price is fair, if uh, something that is in our interest is hidden to us, or if by some kind of stereotype in the system or in the humans in Amazon, we can uh, get uh, um, unfair treatment. The dynamic pricing was uh, our, uh, let's say, holy grail. We want to see why the price change and try to figure it out if for personal uh, data um, or, and therefore discrimination, you can get a worse uh, um, price than someone else. 1,000 products changed in these three days uh, price and they were keeping doing it. That may depend on the merchant or on Amazon itself, but we didn't find out how. We didn't find how exactly. So the shopping experience um, are changing, and uh, in the next presentation, we will see how, and uh, we made the resource question on uh, checking how they are. Yep. Um. So, uh, yeah, our small team was devoted to answering a question whether uh, the operating system of a user's uh, computer affects uh, the search results, the Amazon search results. And to test that, we performed uh, several steps. First, uh, we used uh, four computers. Two of them were on Windows and two of them on Mac OS. But uh, the Mac OS computers were different because one was running uh, an older version of Mac OS. And uh, then, on these four computers, we've installed Brave browser as a clean research browser. We've cleared all history, and um, we've also asked Amazon not to collect our uh, browsing history. There's a special setting on this website. We uh, uh, checked it. And um, then, uh, we basically, from these four computers, we've queried uh, four words. Uh, laptop, smartphone, tablet, and wireless earbuds. And then we collected uh, with the uh, special extension created specifically for this project uh, the search results, basically. And we visualized it with uh, Gephi. And yes, we performed these uh, searches for five times, but uh, they were uh, separated a bit in time. So the first uh, search was on uh, 15th, and uh, all four consecutive searches were performed on the 16th of uh, January. So. Uh, here is a, a GIF of our results visualized in Gephi. As you can see, the gray colored nodes are uh, Mac OS computers and uh, the blue colored uh, nodes are Windows PCs. And uh, all the orange nodes are uh, different products. And uh, on the first day, uh, we've collected a very, uh, a, a, some data that uh, uh, corresponded with our theory that uh, uh, the search results are in fact uh, very uh, personalized for a uh, different uh, operating system as the uh, newest version of macOS got uh, uh, a lot of unique products. But on the second day we could not uh, completely re repeat that. But uh, overall between the five searches that we performed, uh, in uh, three of them uh, macOS based devices got uh, some unique products. Uh, way more unique products than uh, Windows uh, computers did. So this is our main funding, yes. So our group conducted a test to find out if the perceived purchasing power of in will influence search results and pricing on Amazon. We did a similar A-B test using Brave Browser and Amtrak's plugin. And in the first phase, we picked five random items on Amazon to check their prices. Then we did a two-hour data pollution session in two separate groups. Um, both groups would search for the same categories, but one group would click the highest price items, whereas the other group would click the lowest ones, and each user would end up with 25 items added to their shopping cart. 
After this pollution session, in phase two, we repeated the same five queries in phase one to look for any press changes. Then in phase three, we um, treat browsing and adding to cart as two separate variables. We try to replicate the price hikes and drops observed in phase two, but without the browsing behavior, just by adding the items directly into our carts. So based on the data we collected, the results are inconclusive. We found that among the six users, only two of them confirm our hypothesis that the person imitating high purchase behavior would record a price hike, whereas the low purchase user recorded a price drop for the five particular items we compared. But meanwhile, the four other users showed random price changes. In addition, in the phase three, we found that adding items to our cart does not replicate the price changes we observed in phase two. Therefore, based on the existing data, it seems to suggest that adding items to cart does likely does not play a role in influencing the price changes we observed in initial test. Okay, so for our research question, we looked at uh, the extent uh, to which Amazon's uh, search results are influenced by uh, browsing behavior outside of Amazon itself. Uh, to set this up, we ran uh, five different queries that you can see on the slide here. Uh, we did it uh, once uh, without, uh, with just a clean research browser without any uh, pollution of the data. We did it once with uh, 15 to 30 minutes of um, browsing websites related to our topic. And we did it again with uh, one hour of searching. And what we were able to show from this is that there are not uh, very significant results between the two uh, subjects that we uh, analyzed. We had one part of our group uh, look at uh, websites and topics related to music and another group uh, topics related to sport. Uh, we found uh, no meaningful difference between these two categories, but we did find a difference between um, the amount of pollution that the browser had did have some um, uh, implication for the search results and especially for the um, average price of the products being offered. In this graph, uh, you can see our five different queries and it's most uh, significantly visible for the smartwatch query. Um, on the left, you can see the clean data without any pollution and on the right, uh, the far right, you can see uh, what happened after an hour of polluting out data. So uh, it's hard to draw conclusions from this, but what we can conclude from this is that it seems that the more data Amazon has of you, uh, on average, the uh, price of the products offered is slightly higher. So uh, my group focus on the product diversity and we try to answer the research question to what extent is the diversity of products on Amazon.com reflected in different regions and to find out we performed different clean um, searches also in the Brave browser so there was no personalization from our previous um, searches on anything that was that would interfere with the data and um, the only thing that would differ between those um, different searches would be um, that we would set the delivery region to either Northern California, Southern California, East Missouri, or West Missouri. And then we would query for candle, coffee, lamp, nail polish, mouse, and PlayStation. Um, we screenshotted the Amazon result pages and then used the Amazon tracking exposed tool to um, collect the data and kind of put it, we put it in uh, spreadsheets and then we would use those spreadsheets um, and would put them either in Tableau and also in Gephi to create visualizations and to find out how um, the shopping spaces differ in different regions. And as an example, we put this um, visualization here that is made with Gephi and this is just for the search query nail, nail polish. And those blue um, bubbles all resemble a product. So you can see that um, for which region the products would show up. So the ones in the middle would, were most likely um, would, have, would have shown up for all the different regions and the ones on the side were like very unique and would only show up in one certain region. So for this example, you can see that in um, East Missouri, there was a lot of there were a lot of unique products, and for example, Southern California only had one unique product. Thank you. 
and uh, reaching the final part of our project, we uh, took on the question of gender and we started with the main research question, to what extent are Amazon search results uh, gender coded? Uh, in order to approach this, at first, uh, our first methodology had three steps. In the beginning, we tried to establish a baseline by going into Amazon with a clean browser and uh, through the selection of six items, we tried to track, uh, we, we tried to track how those performed on Amazon. And then in our second phase, uh, we separated into two teams. Uh, one team had gendered uh, profiles on Amazon and uh, searched for items in that way and the other one was anonymous and acted uh, and added to the basket uh, either f more feminine or more masculine products. Then in the third phase of our project we repeated uh, phase one partly um, with the personalization and therefore we collected items with um, a polluted browser in that sense. Okay, to visualize this first methodology, we decided to perform uh, visual analysis, and this is the overall result. Um, as for the other groups, the result at the end, they're not so satisfying. Uh, so we decided to focus on two specific um, search queries that were uh, t-shirt and underwear, uh, where here you can see in, in uh, orange, the results that were targeted for females and uh, in grey, the, the results that were targeted for male. And as you can see, uh, for both, like for the three of the um, users that we use, so not logged in, female and male, in the first case of t-shirt, um, they are going to receive only results targeted for males. And so this was kind of our um, first results that we got, but not, it was not enough to um, say something about the recommendation system and the profil profilation of the, of the algorithm. So we decide to perform a second different methodology to understand. And therefore we moved on to uh, a secondary question which was how do results vary based on different Amazon algorithms and if one picks gender coded items does Amazon then make gendered recommendations uh, based on their basket or cart. Um, therefore following this logic we looked at uh, the separate algorithm determining recommendations for uh, users that have already put items in their baskets, and then try to see if those are explicitly uh, gendered. And actually we found out that this methodology work. In the sense of uh, these two graphs shown that uh, we, like as, we, as she said, we manually code uh, which are the products that are recommended for women and for men, and they're explicitly, explicitly uh, said in the description of the product. And as you can see, um, for the female result, at the beginning you have kind of a um, uh, like com confused situation, but as you, like in, in the history uh, of the browsing, you can understand that um, adding more products, you're going to have a more defined uh, profile and uh, gendered result. Um, so here are the first two findings. So actually the research result and the recommendation system uh, below the basket is uh, two, there are two different algorithms and they work in two different completely way and um, in the second like in in the recommendation system the the, the products are personalized uh, after this we decide to go back to our first research question and to start to, to research um, the product that we searched at the beginning to understand in the research uh, box to understand if some, something was changing and actually this is a result for the female account for boxer and t-shirt so this kind of explained that in the research section nothing is profiled and like the male uh, profile is actually the one that is gonna uh, be given by default and yeah we need So this has been so far the uh, hardest uh, analysis made uh, in, the, in, in, our, in the platforms, mostly because uh, we were uh, 
keeping using uh, anonymous, uh, uh, sorry, unlogged profile, and probably Amazon do not know anything about those persons, and try to guess what they want by randomizing it. And uh, it's like uh, we were uh, depriving uh, the sensor of Amazon of uh, information they need, and uh, based on that, uh, um, we didn't uh, really figure out uh, which is the threshold where the personalization start. That was uh, the, the, the main issue, and it's also one of the difficulty of algorithm analysis. If we use uh, your personal account, uh, we get, uh, of course, personalized results, but we don't know why, because uh, we didn't uh, check how the person behaved in the past. And the uh, algorithm was uh, the, the key word. Uh, we saw also with the last uh, um, research that uh, different algorithms are in play. Some of them may be differently controlled, uh, but the main, um, the main one providing uh, the search results uh, seems to be detached from, uh, from the, the only research in which uh, we found some actual control. Conclusion. Well, the personalization play out in uh, many different levels and uh, uh, was also meaningful to isolate the kind of products. If uh, you are looking for uh, earplugs or if you are looking for uh, a specific brand uh, on a specific model, that uh, uh, is something that uh, we should have keep uh, in, uh, in account uh, to, to better compare our um, tests. Thank you.